Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome, welcome to, to, to the WYW Podcast. We cover all things women's youth wrestling. Now here are your hosts, the Wrestling Encyclopedia, Casey Gallagher, and the voices of women's youth wrestling, Jonathan Kane and Nathan Farrell. After five long years, Gold Rush is finally in the rear view, and it is time to get hyped for Immortal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Weymouth Youth Wrestling Podcast. I'm the wrestling encyclopedia, Casey Gallagher, here once more with my fellow voices of Weymouth Youth Wrestling, Mr. Excitement, Jonathan Caterer. Woo! And... <laughs> Well, and you said I'm Mr. Excitement. <laughs> that was the most unexcited excitement I've you ever heard wrong. out of you. you. You did that completely wrong. We're going ahead. And the main man himself, Mr. Nathan Farrar. Wee! 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 Thanks, Matt Nova, for that one. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> but yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Immortal is now right in our... Right, not even in the peripheral vision anymore. It's in the, it's it's in the in fire grasp. We're in, here. We're right there. Foxborough, in a couple weeks' time. Here we come. Oh, hopefully boy. it doesn't smell. Yeah, right? Yeah, that would Hopefully suck. it doesn't smell. It's already going to be cold as shit out, although we, we are going to have some... Uh, some sort of so central heating. Central heating. Yeah, we, we got that. We're, we're, we're figuring that, that. that whole issue out because, as we've said before... We weren't expecting it to take this long to get up to Immortal. Let's but be it did. It's okay. It's all right. It, t- it took its time, but uh. You know yay! what? It's let's... it's gonna be all the better once it's finally happening. Ready? Let's go. Let's run down yep. the card. It's official. Every match is. Oh, we going through the, the, uh, But, we but go before the we do, I suggest card? before we do, we give a quick recap of what happened at Gold. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I know people have so many questions. Sorry, and I, I have zero again. answers. <laughs> Yeah, right. well, yeah, especially towards the end, uh, which we definitely will get we to. We still have no idea what happened. I had to, uh, uh, did, did you guys see that vlog uh, that I posted on the channel? I had to, uh, remember, like, no, we, we got our power cut off. I had to inform pretty much the public what happened afterwards because it was that chaotic. And I, I was trying to scramble around to see what the heck was we going lost, down. We lost power in the entire Sean right Sean freaked out when we finally, when we finally got him to wake and... Pour the water bottle on him. Um, I well, feel well like there's your first pump. mistake. You don't pour, You don't just dump cold water on a U.S. Marine that's been How knocked else out. We're gonna freaking wake him up. Uh, smelling smelling salt. Salt. Have you never heard yeah. of Have you never heard of smelling salts? Easy for you to say. <laughs> I don't think I want to do the smelling salt method. I've heard that. that, 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 that let's that just idea. let's just not go over that anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Oh, yeah. Welcome we, to we the WIW podcast, that, and we're yeah. gonna be talking about, of course, the great event of. How, oh, how amazing it was. It was. Oh, was, my God. For the ups and its downs, it was a very, very amazing top to, event. Top to bottom, this was a stacked card. Yep. So Seven why don't we matches. go over the first match? First match, uh, Maggie Dannyman, uh, Corey Dangerous, and Brett mentioned take on the Almost Cousin Alliance, Chris Phoenix and Jones Meister. Uh... It's, right off that was bat. a fast match. That was yeah. 10 the, minutes flat. If that. It was easily the shortest match in WYW history. But it was. It felt like an eternity because I wanted to see those uh, Maggie Daddy men get freaking annihilated. Well, mission accomplished. <laughs> well, they, well, I wouldn't say they were annihilated, but they definitely were eliminated. So hey, three out of four ain't bad. Yep. Yeah, they got annihilated, but they came back because they had the heart to. Um, uh, if you know, I guess the big spots that everybody is going to refer to in that match is definitely the. Uh, the bull hammer dangerous uppercut combo. The, the, that's like the great. That is, in my opinion, that's how you set up a show. I didn't that expect it. No one expected, no one expected it. expected it. But that that was definitely. I, I about dropped a brick. They honestly probably should have covered them. They may have won one you, of those pinfalls had they covered them. Yeah, but here's the whole thing. We gotta remember the team that we're talking about here. The almost cousin. They alliance. don't care about the glory. They care about the pain that they bring on top of yeah, it. Yeah, I'm well aware. They want the glory, obviously, but they want they want but a trail of bodies behind them. That's secondary. Obviously, Chris would come back with some ring shot, uh, ring bell shots from hell. Chris Phoenix would hit a Phoenix splash through a table onto Corey Dangerous. 
Uh, the freaking that sunset foot power bomb onto Jones Meister, shoulder first into the post. I'm surprised his arms still straight works. out of the playbook of Kyle Weaver, mind yeah, you. Yeah, no kidding. Um, it was a very ta- it was a very tactical match. I mean, yeah. We got to see the ups and downs of both teams. Yes, I and loved. Uh, I I I gotta give credit where credit is due. I I kind of like the old school strategy. I gotta admit. Um, the but whole swaparoo when they were like when Brett mentioned and Corey Dangerous were switching up uh, their on their opponents to like it's give a smart them a new thing challenge. to it's a smart thing to do yeah so, keep your opponents guessing uh, I I'll give them credit there uh, obviously they they hit some ridiculous combo spots Jones Meister was with that freaking uh, Jones fire with the freaking Jones Walker under the bell well that's towards the end but one of the one of the one of the memories I have of the match was when uh, Phoenix, Chris Phoenix hits the Phoenix Arrow, and Jones is on the top of the ladder, hits a moonsault right after to try to go for a pin cover, but Corey is able to get there and break up the fall. Yeah, somehow. Uh, pretty much uh, winning the game. Oh wait, wasn't tag? Was, wasn't with Charles Chris Ro- Phoenix? Wasn't wasn't Charles Robinson out of position on that pin? Uh, no, he was right there, but uh, Corey was able to break up the fall with a knee strike and right in the nick of time thing. But it was it's it's a very intense match, and I have it's, to say it's, it's, it's the a, perfect opener for any of it. It really is, yeah, and with oh, an, yeah. it really is, and with a photo finish, Arrow of the Bird, Joan, uh, Dragon Walk, uh, Dragonborn Stunner, I think we're calling it. Uh, the, I want to talk about one more thing too: the resiliency of Chris Phoenix. I don't think it be understated. It really can't. Oh yeah. The, well, Keep I mean, mind, we think he about kicked it. out of a bullhammer German combo, and the back of his head and the front of his head was. He's got to have a headache for a couple weeks for that. Well, Hopefully you it goes remember away. too. He's been, remember, he's been in he matches. He got the back of his head off the turnbuckle as well. You got to remember that he's, he's been in matches against Sean Maverick and Jones Ian Lan- and, and Ian Lancaster. Another smart move. He by, fought both of them at one time and beat both of them. Smart. Another smart move by Jones Meister is hitting a suplex and turning Corey Dangerous in midair to shield him from a big boot, and then he hit a corkscrew dive. On, at where Corey's head hits the back off a of support beam. Is, every, is everything good? Everything's good. Just right, making sure. Um, and that's when the ring bell with Jones Walker happened. Uh, and then the photo finish happens, and they yeah. get the Duke in. Arrow I think it was br- like nine minutes, ten seconds, something like roughly. that. Roughly. It's, it's roughly in the ten-minute mark. It yeah, is from a, not, it's between nine and ten minutes. It's a perfect landslide ten-minute match. Yes. But, yeah, that photo finish, man. Arrow of the Bird and Dragonborn Stunner combo. Oh yeah! Holy, uh, and then holy mother of Aldwin. <laughs> that means uh, Chris. Uh, obviously, if you guys have not seen this match, I definitely uh, encourage you to watch it. It's a great match. It's up on the YouTube channel right now. Uh, you can see what uh, people were commenting. Obviously, uh, when we were going live as well. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of comments. Not, I haven't actually gone back and seen the comments yet. I gotta go look back at the live comments. Well, we'll we'll do that after. I we... guarantee you, it was probably over those uh, boom, the bull hammer, and the uh, the uppercut because that was a talk about a photo start. By yeah. the way, photo start into a photo finish. It's like holy, and, and, and that's that's why I love this business because bookends. Started with a double finish and it ended with a double finish. Yeah, right. But uh, no one expected it. it. It's a great starter match, but the next match, oh, Joanna Ramos, Colleen Horizon, Colleen. Everybody, everybody that I knew was going to say that she was not going to get it. Yeah, Col- no I, one thought. I, even I, said, I didn't think no she was going to get it. no way Colleen was going to be able to get the. Get uh, the what, I think well, one person when Johnny was on the podcast last guessed that um, Colleen was going to win. Yeah, guess I who? Yeah, that was you. <laughs> but it was it was definitely one of those matches that. It, it took a slower pace at the beginning. Yes, it took its time to to. Swing. <laughs> but once I mean, it got, but once <laughs> it got going, if slow means they went to the outside and Colleen was getting her crap kicked in onto a ladder, and then Colleen dished it out in return, then yeah, sure, I could, I could see. I could well, see that. well, here's the thing. Remember, I'm saying a pace of the last match because that last yeah, match yeah, was true, fast true. as hell. This yeah. match, however, was was very slower pace, and they took their time trying to pick each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. But. Colleen, uh, jo- Joanna lost a lot of opportunities to get that case. Yeah, and what what did I say? And to to quote you, my good friend, what did I say was going to happen all throughout our last podcast in that match? Yep. Colleen took advantage of the inexperience of Joanna Ramos. Yep, and, mm. and, and, and got the Duke. 
I will say, uh, the beginning of the match, uh, Joanna Ramos, with her brute strength, just tosses Colleen into the outside of the ring. Her, the back of her head smashes off the ladder. Uh, then she does a, uh, a uh, knee driver where her back hits the other support beam of the ladder. Uh, Colleen would retaliate in turn with a Hurricane Rana, sending her face first into the steps. And then very, a bulldog right yep, after that to follow very, up. And very smart by Colleen. Pretty much all throughout that match, she was targeting the ankle of Joanna Ramos. And the back as yes, well. Yes, not only hampering her ability to climb the ladder. Hampering her ability to even lift her. Right. At yep. certain points. Cause, cause it, not or the even legs, support her own weight. Your legs are the most important she, thing that you're going to use to lift somebody right off the ground. Right. Or to even support her own weight when, Truth. as you guys remember, towards the end of that match. She, she collapsed. And tr- and uh, right at the end, she tried to hit the 450 from the top of the ladder. Mm-hmm. She couldn't get the proper velocity, as I pointed out during the highlight reel, because her ankle was all kinds of messed up. She couldn't push push off properly. And remember, before Colleen attacked that ankle, uh, like I'll explain how Colleen obviously attacks the ankle in a minute, but Joanna was on a damn roll. Oh, I mean, God. she hit... Uh, she hit some of the craziest springboards I've ever seen. The the freaking, she hit a mid air Van Daminator kick. High, she she did exactly as I was gonna. That's and then the exact thing that I said she was gonna try to do is, she was picking her opponent apart and finding every opportunity in the playbook to make her opponent not even have the chance to go up to the ladder. Go let's not forget too. Let's not forget too. Vigilante moonsault into a reverse DDT from all the way across the damn ring, yep. and that Colleen vi- got in trying to catch Joanna. And that vigilant knee of Joanna Ramos's cannot be understated. Oh my Lord, yeah, the vigilant knee, or is it the vigilante knee? I, either one works. I think it's the vigilant knee. I think that's what you've been saying on the comments. Yeah, that, that's knee. what he said. It's actually pronounced vigilant for vigilant. future reference. Vigilant? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, I, I remember one of us originally called it the vigilant knee, but who's counting anymore? Yeah. Um, but yes, as as the match would go on, uh, they were just brutalizing each other with the ladder. It's it's a it's a match you guys should definitely watch. Uh, you should you, uh, Colleen and Joanna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is what, this is one. This is the whole damn yeah. card. The whole the whole friggin' oh, yeah. card is absolutely. Watch the way worthy. Colleen ends up, uh, I, I will talk about these two uh, specific ones. Uh, the spear, spear, spear versus spear in the match where yeah. Joanna and Colleen were hitting each other with spears. Uh, Joanna would hit hers in the later Which, portion of the match where Colleen would hit hers in midpoint. Spear. When she when Colleen hits her spear. She would then take advantage and just keep brutalizing Joanna and at one point gets the chair, wraps it around her leg, and stomps the chair on her ankle. This is what really helped Colleen here because that this kind of slowed Joanna Ramos's momentum down significantly. Yeah. On that and on top of her spider German suplex, which was on the top rung of the ladder. Yep, all right yeah. up to the back of her neck. Yep. Yeah, and you mentioned spear versus spear. A little bit of a preview. We can also say that for... Um, Kai and Tai Dojo versus London Devastation. Oh, yeah, I But agreed. we'll get to that when we get to that. Definitely, definitely. Yep. Uh, I will say that the end of the match saw Joanna try the the 450 splash from the very top of the ladder. She As was a, pulling a Lizzie Gray and Deanna Tabasso here, by the way. Yeah, she, she, she really was. She was 20 feet into the damn air. Got a five-foot Got a five-foot five launch, trying to twist in the air, and misses completely. Colleen's able to fi- roll out just in the nick of time. Hit Col- a back suplex and hit her rock vault version pull- too. Colleen pulled the Takamichi Noku. Yep. What Colleen does is when she hits the rock bomb version two, she does she lets go with a jackknife version, and she and twists drops her, her on her knees, in, basically. Yeah, she she twists her in midair, driving her back onto the metal frame of what used to be the table. Climbs the ladder, gets the briefcase. Joanna Ramos tried to. Stand on her own two feet, but once Colleen got the case, she God, just collapses. God bless Joanna Ramos for having the gumption to try and get up, even as Colleen was pulling the briefcase down. But by God, the Joan Jet of WIW is officially on the rock and roll train to immortal. Yeah, absolutely. Joan Jet of WIW, that's new. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've yeah. I've been saying it for three months. Well, listen, I... I'm Let's just get to the next part. My God, you two are gonna argue about this for like two more minutes. I'm gonna lose. We always mind. argue about go. the stupid crap. Let's go. <sighs> do we speaking have to of stupid, talk about this? Speaking of stupid crap, do we have to? You gotta talk about it. Yeah, we kind of do. Do you, Do you want me to lead it off? Sean annihilated. Uh, I, I, was, I was so him. happy because Mark Young was finally getting his he just was. due. 
And then, but that whole match, Mark got one lucky pin, and we're all like, there's no way he's going to be able to get out on top of this. Well, yep. yeah, and, and it was especially true once he started slapping Sean, and then Sean was like, Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, you're about to get your shit fucked now. Slapping makes me erotic. You know what it gets <laughs> you. No, 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 no. I don't think I... No, I don't want that. We don't want that image in our heads. Thank it's you. there. You can't even get I rid of it. I hate you. You need to scrub I it out. I hate you. No, but... Sean throughout this entire match was not just picking him apart; he was annihilating every. The first move of the match, he hit, hits a he hits a clothesline that turns Mark Young inside out. No, said. his first move was the spear. No, it wasn't. No, it was it was, a, it was, a it was the meat hook clothesline. Was it? Mm. I swore it was the spear. He hit him so hard, as ger- I said, he broke him in fucking half. Meat hook clothesline, German, another German, another uh, 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 variations of slams. Punches, kicks. He, he beat his ass. Everything. I mean, he just man, beat him up. Man, screw Brock Lesnar. This is the real beast of the wrestling world. Oh my lord, dude! At six foot four, almost three hundred pounds, and just got former muscle. U.S. Marine. <laughs> just, Are you kidding he me? Just annihilated him, man. He made a promise in his promo in the promo package that aired prior to the match that he was going to annihilate him, and that he he had target in sight, and he did. Full scale assault, weapons on, free. And on Sean, uh, Sean Maverick had a, had a motive in beating Mark Young. Mark almost it, it looked like it had he kept he on had his that assault. Three, man. He had that three. This is where I say he is a tactician, but he's 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 not necessarily smart because once he started slapping him, he he was he was done. He was dead to rights. I think, Pretty much. I think yeah. the moment where we could tell Mark was kind of finished is as soon as Sean dragged his corpse. All the way over to the turnbuckle and started bashing his head into which the is where, Which is where Mark Young was busted open. Yep, that dude, he was done. And then he hit the wheelbarrow face buster onto the uh, one of the po- uh, one of the pillars of the cell. Sean was just having fun at part of it. Sean was just having fun at that point. Yes, but again, if you take a look at that match, he is slowly but surely over time getting gassed, and I think that's where that counter attack was at its perfect opportunity to take him out. Yeah. Because yeah. by that point, he did everything he wanted to do. And at that point, you could kind of tell in his face, with the beats of sweat coming down his brow, is that he was he was getting tired out. And that, Well, yes. I will say, though, once he hit that 12-gauge, it, was, it was academic. And then the lights go out. Now, I want to put this in perspective. All of our systems were hacked. Everything. His, we, we couldn't use anything. Nate, even even Nate's people's fo- phones in the audience. Were Nate's phone. Nate's phones. Your uh, our monitors. My switch got hacked. I wasn't even hooked up to the Wi-Fi and it got hacked. Every everything. Every electronic All device. All we saw in was that a arena. white screen. All we saw was red. All white, we saw was epilepsy. Digital, yeah. Digital. All we saw was epilepsy for like five seconds, and then we see these computer screens coming on. And then we hear, "I'm sorry, Sergeant. I'm afraid I can't let you do that." And then this. What do we even call it? Asm. Well, A S E M. His name is Asm. He's yeah. a cyborg. Yeah. He's not human. Uh, that much I can determine. He took what? It looks like a cyborg. He completely put away, put away the big guy. Yeah. And and he tossed four choke right slams over his head. and well a young bomb and Mark Young scampers away with the win. Yeah. And and for those of you who are curious, uh, somebody was kind enough to clarify it for us in another hack job that we'll get into later. Um, apparently, ASM stands for Assault Sentry Elimination Machine. So, definitely did his job. Yeah. But we haven't seen Sean since. No, we haven't. No, we saw I, him. Well, well, you saw him. I haven't seen him since. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen him since. So, just to just to put this in perspective. So, this will... We'll cover the backs after the show went off the air stuff. So, I want to put this in perspective. And I already... I already said it on the uh, vlog uh, prior to this podcast. You guys want to uh, listen to that, go check it out. But obviously you guys were with me. Uh, Mark Mark, and Na- Mark uh, was baffled. So was Archangel. So was Michael X. They were still in the ring by this point, let's not forget. The entire arena's power went out. People were panicking. We didn't know what the hell was going on. We're lucky that our live feed didn't get Yeah, done. exactly. Yeah. So we, we, we went back um, I mean, luckily it was towards the end of the show too, um, but yeah, it our our entire thing got hacked pretty much. 
So once the lights finally turned on, we told everybody to thank you for coming. Please drive safely. We head to the back, and there's Sean Maverick still passed out. We go and wake him up with a bottle of water, and he's freaking his shit. And he's throwing shit. He almost drew something to you at one point. You were like... <laughs> okay. We had to pull I'm you like, out of the freaking way. I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. And we had to pull you out of the way. And um, from that point, we... We talked to Sean. We finally got him to calm down. We were wondering what the heck happened. What made you freak out? And he said he was like, it was like he was back in wartime. Oh, shit. Like, Nathan and I were talking to him, and um, we just kind of looked at him and was like, what? Well, I think And then it was just... It was PTSD. Something like that, or, like, something else. It's, It's... Oh, PTSD. Because, um, yes, but there was more to it, I feel like. Cause... No, you're, you're just over, ex- you're just trying to over exemplify something that's just as simple well, as Well, why is. would he feel like he's back in more time? I don't know, maybe he got a, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand volts scrambling his brain? There was more, uh, he said it was because of more stuff to it. He said he was, like, trapped in a room as well, so. He, he kind of was. I don't know what room that was, but. Well, either way. Yeah, he. I guess, I guess he, we know he's who he's pissed, and he wants Asm at Immortal. Yeah, exactly. Thank and you. we got a one-off deal with Asm. Um, he's coming in for Immortal, and the match stipulation Jim Cornette signed off on is an Iron uh, Iron Man match, and we'll get into the implications of that as time minutes. goes on. Yep. Thirty minutes. It just. <laughs> it's gonna be oh insane. Boy. Man versus machine. We'll go on uh, to the next match after that travesty of Mark Young advancing. Yes. Although, but yeah, I, we, I, did did, a, I did want to kind of sh- skip ahead to kind of explain the whole Sean Maverick deal. Yeah. Uh, we did oh. we did end up finding him, but yeah, we haven't seen him since Gold Rush. Yeah, although although we did get a sweet promo between uh, Mark, Mike, and James uh, after the uh, the travesty in the cage. Yeah. It, Sick it was, burn from James. Yeah, no kidding. That was anyway, a great burn. Yeah, it was a great... Anyway, uh, yes, next match. Uh, six-man tag. London Devastation versus Kayentai Dojo. Yep. And by the way, I have not quit. By the way, I will I will say I am I am still the third man on commentary. Yes, I almost quit. Yeah. He's he's the third what happened. He was he's the, the third back. wheel, ladies and gentlemen. He just he confirmed He was that it. pissed at Jim Gornet. And honestly, I don't blame him. Well, there wasn't anything. Hey, you know what? He made, it, he made it up. And by the way, the whole... Freaking! The only reason why Mark Young and Michael X is in the Hell in a Cell is because of me, because he said I'll give you whatever you want, and that's what I wanted. I wanted I whoever be, won. Who, I wait, wanted huh. whoever won the last match. I to thought pick it, the I, stipulation. I, yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. I'm like, didn't he pick the stipulation on that one? Yeah, Mike's picked the stipulation. I just said whoever wins Michael X, James Archangel, give them a choice in stipulation. So and, and that's how Michael Lex was able to find out. Yeah, and he found out just before he went after Mark. Pretty much, yeah. But if we take a look, um, right after that, we have of course a Kai Taito versus the London Devastation, one of the one of the better six man matches that we've seen so far. It just yeah. in general in wrestling, it was, it was elimination based, and it, they they pulled it out. We're gonna we're gonna rapid fire the elimination. So Taka Michinoku hit a brain buster on Matt Harrington, which softened him up for the sunset flip power bomb and dynamite destroyer combo by Kyle Weaver to eliminate Matt Harrington. Jack Robinson tried to break it up. He actually missed the knee drop. Yeah, leg drop, leg drop, leg drop. Uh, leg and drop. yeah, he missed it. And you know Matt Harrington was eliminated, which prompted. Uh, uh, basically, Chris Foster and uh, Jack, Robinson. Jack Robinson, the commandant, uh, pretty much go into tactical assault mode. And, uh, man, uh, the they, double ISK by Jack and, and, uh, and Chris. And Chris was it's scary. Un- unbelievable. Yeah. Um, a lot of feet. <laughs> yeah, two feet. A lot of feet. Wasn't fun. Not a lot of feet. Uh, and then they would also uh, put Kyle Weaver, uh, th- I, I think it was Kyle Weaver, through the table. Uh, I could I could get it wrong because there was so much that happened in this match. This, this was this was a marathon. And then, was. yeah, pretty much all both teams were fighting it out. Kyle gets uh, eliminated. Second. Kyle match. Kyle gets eliminated yep. with the, a the anaconda an- vice. Yep, the anaconda vice. Uh, because of his John Gray injuries tried to break prior. it up. By the way, Kyle Kyle uh, sustained injuries in the quarterfinals. Let's not forget. So yeah, once yeah. he got that anaconda vice locked up on him, yeah, uh, plus was- taking two. 
two feet to the face, going through a table. Um, and all that other crap. And all the other crap. that He also took a Fisherman Buster by Jack Robinson, yep. uh, which John Gray was just able to break up once the undercut of ice was locked in was after done. Chris distracted the other two. He tapped out immediately and was out, uh, leaving it on to a two-on-two -two affair. Yeah. Uh, from that point... And this is where the spear versus spear that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Chris Foster gets the hot tag from Jack Robinson, mm. cleans house with the Kyan Tai Dojo, and I believe Jack Robinson hits the Fisherman Buster, or was it the Brexit Breaker? Uh, no, it was fisherman the Fisherman Buster, buster he, he but... Not that it wasn't even him hitting the freshman break. buster, I, which which surprised. I me. remember the order elimination. It was, it was actually Chris Foster in the ring. He hits Chaos Theory into the ISK. As he's doing the ISK, Jack Robinson comes flying in from spears, his corner and, and spears, and spears John, Gray. John Gray off the apron. Right as Chris hits the ISK on Taka, that actually eliminates Taka right in the nick of time. Right before Ta uh, Taka is able to get into the ring to break and then it up. But we're down to a one-on-two affair. Yes, but not to be outdone, here comes good old John Gray. Throws Chris Foster skyward and hits the Winchester rifle for that pin. Then hits a clothesline on a uh, then it hits a clothesline from hell, uh, where John Gray was or Jack where? Robinson was on the apron, right? Um, and pretty much takes him out of the equation to be able to pin Chris Foster and eliminate Chris Foster. This leaves uh, the two men that opened quarterfinals episode one, two, the last two. Uh, it's Jack they, Robinson. They open quarterfinals yeah, episode two. Yeah, episode two. Sorry, it's Jack Robinson and John, John Gray. Gray. Um, these two had a hell of a match. They, the finish, they went for another like twenty minutes. It felt like John Gray uh, hit a back suplex on the apron, which, by the way, if you did not know, is the hardest part of the ring. Um, but then John Gray goes to no, the top. That's a lie. Yeah, this, this is the hardest part of the ring. What do you mean, my dick? Fuck you. You're not even in the ring. I'm always You're in on the, the ring. commentary. Booth. I'm everywhere but nowhere at the same time. How oh, often yeah. are you everywhere? More than you think, but less, less than, than you, you know. know. <laughs> God damn it, Nathan. Anyway, uh, John Gray tries to go for a headbutt, uh, but hits one of the broken pieces of announcer table head first, and he was out. Yeah. Uh, Jack Robinson took uh, uh, the opportunity to capitalize, brought him back into the ring, and then it finishes him off not with the Brexit breaker, but with, but the, with the fisherman, fisherman bust. buster. Uh, to eliminate Sean Gray again and win the match, but take nothing away from John Gray. And then uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Yeah. I, okay. Out of so nowhere, put it this way: the darkness the lights, comes. When light, when the lights went off, we all kind of got collectively scared a bit. But then we noticed that all our tech wasn't freaking out. Yes. So and then, then out of nowhere, out of nowhere here comes Victor Sagat, just saying, "Fuck you." Lays out Jack Robinson with all of his. Black now anger. keep in mind, Chris Foster and Matt Harrington had to be in the medical uh, medical room, so they didn't even know what happened until after. He just dude, he beat the shit out of him. He beat the shit out of him. He so, the bat so right and when they got in, nailed him as hard as possible in the brain. <laughs> it was kind of funny because I, I this was um so Chris, Chris Dodd who oh by the way. That's another thing we forgot to mention. Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris Dodd, Dodd beat Little the Andre hell out had a Little backstage Andre. brawl, and Chris, uh, Little Andre was supposed to be on commentary with us, but for the cell block he match, he gets busted open with... in what five moves? Yeah, and yeah. then Chris. Hello, paycheck. Yep, Chris Dodd just brutalized he Little bipped, Andre. He bipped him super. Hard. Which you know what? I'm not complaining about. So... Yeah, because Michael Andre would have just been a hindrance to us on commentary. So little Andre, his stupid little Andre was, was there, and apparently the story goes is he he was just kind of standing there like after he got uh, checked out of the uh, the room, he's just kind of waiting for Jim Cornette near the uh, near the office. I'm trying to complain about the and situation. And he's seeing, um, he he told the story to somebody, and then we got the information that he sees Jack Robinson go into the uh, room. Uh, right as Chris Foster and Harrington are getting checked out, and they were wondering what the heck happened, and uh, Jack Robinson is like, "I don't know." <laughs> he all, was all he was concussed. I, saw I think this piece of wood fly at a very high velocity, like it was being slammed in the face with a Louisville slugger right to the brain. Oh wait, then, he was. And then for the next what was it, two and a half, almost three minutes? He just, just got that. Of, almost a five minute beatdown. Almost. He hit, he was putting him in submissions. He was making him tap out. 
was making him submit pretty much. He was this is the see fans. see John, this is why you don't open your mouth. Yeah, I I said that Jack Robinson's a submission specialist. Well, yeah, not anymore. Then there's Victor Sagat. Yeah. I mean, holy crap, dude. The he knees, he came those, in those, God those God Muay Thai knees. Muay Thai God knees, knees. <laughs> that combination strike dude, and he the didn't spin even try kick. to aim for the chest on that one. He went straight for the head. He went Nope, I'm gonna knee you in the face as long as I want. <laughs> and then he hit him with three, count him three, lichen, uh, lichen drivers. Yep. Um, and yeah, just kind of walked out like yeah, da 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 da. Hello. And, and then he had, and then he had the what I'm calling the bite of the werewolf. He basically had Hell's Gate. Mm. Good he, got, name. he got him in that locked jaw, and it was just terrifying. Oh God. Yeah, that was that was. I think brutal. that's the moment where Kuzan's like, "Okay, I am, I am done. Nope, I am not fighting this anymore. Nope, I'm done for the day." Well, jokes on him, but story for later. Yep. Uh, from that point on, we talk about the fifth match, which was another very uh, crazy affair between the Morning Stars and the Doom Brigade. The returning the, Morning Stars. The, yes. One of the best finishes you'll see in a tag match. I gotta first. say, I gotta say this. Uh, some of the, some of the, uh, I'm not gonna remember every spot. That I is didn't remember the, it when it happened. Listen, all, I'm all, not gonna, remember all you're gonna say is this, okay? Hashtag high flying supremacy, because that was that match. The, there was so much. There, there were just gets, so many high flying moments if, that came in count. Here's one. Well, 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 put it this way: if ACA and MDM was hashtag high octane shit, this was as Nathan said: hashtag high flying supremacy. And in this match, I, I remember the ending specifically. You have Matt laid the hell out. With the, with the Death Valley, Valley driver. driver onto the ladder from Eddie Kelly. Which, who, yeah, as yeah. he was putting Matt down, saw out of the corner of his eye that Johnny Starr was hitting the corkscrew well, comet and onto jumped. Brandon Curtis. He went for that jump just to He save broke up the pin he and then rocketed it over to Curtis. the corner. They, that was, and we see Matt in that final second. He tries to run, but he just couldn't make it in time. Because by that point, referee already hit his hand. And he was uh, to out. Matt. He was out that, like a that, light. that ending even caught me off guard. I thought Matt was going to be able to make it. No, he didn't make it. He, didn't, he wasn't fast enough. But, and Matt, but yeah, is, that was and Matt is no slow man. That was heartbreaking to see, man, for Johnny and, yeah. uh, and Matt. Uh, I will say this, too. Um, there is a silver lining for Johnny Starr, but we'll get and, into that later. Yeah, we'll definitely what I've get been into hearing it. is Matt Anarchy as well. Uh, yeah, well, we already knew Anarchy was... Uh, well, Matt, Matt Nova was going to plan on something. But I will say this much. Um... The uh, another big spot of the match was when Eddie gets knocked off the ladder by Johnny, uh, and then both Matt, or no, by Matt. Matt goes up to the top rope and Johnny corkscrews uh, over the ropes and Johnny uh, Matt Nova hits a senton, taking Brandon was Curtis it, out. Wasn't Brandon on the table as well? Uh, yeah, he was on the table, so they broke him through the table. They, they nailed his ass. That was <laughs> they ridiculous. nailed him, dude. He got hurt. The superplex by Matt Nova onto Eddie Kelly through the table. But um, now, now we're going to get the almost cousin alliance versus the Doom Brigade. Oh, Mortal, I can't so wait. it's going to be a great match. I can't wait for that. Same it's exact stip- By the way, that same exact stipulation. Yep. Uh, uh, is it? Yep. I Extreme it rules. La- no, it's a ladder match. It's actually. a ladder match stipulation. Oh yeah, that's right too. Yeah, it's a ladder yeah, that's match a ladder stipulation. Match. I'm like. Wait, no, no, it's a ladder match stipulation. <laughs> yeah. This is going to, uh, dude, uh, talk about tag team titles hanging over their head. Like, that's going to be. The Dew Brigade have worked very hard to try to go this far. And so As have the ACA. Alliance. Yep. This is going to be insane to see. I can't wait for this match. It's just a case of who wants it more. Well, so yeah, that, I think it all so depends those brackets, on who has more, you know, experience in that and who's going to get the lucky hit in. Well, they're both very experienced in ladder matches. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, very, very but we need to remember that. Um, you know, Brendan has one thing over all of them. He has physically gone to the absolute extreme in WIW right now. Oh, yeah. He still has the greatest moment ever shot in WIW history. Whoop! Now, I will say for Johnny Starr... He didn't Star, even win that either. No, <laughs> yeah. he didn't. Yeah, no, he didn't. Uh, I will say for Johnny Starr, uh, he gets his wish. He gets James Archangel, but I will explain how that happened as well. So, while we were backstage... Um, after the show, um, and James was James Archangel was wandering backstage and wondering what the heck happened with Sean as well. 
Um, Johnny ends up pretty much trying to pick a fight with, uh, with Archangel, and Jim and Mark had to separate the two, as you saw. And uh, they have, oh, man. Oh, man. They almost, dude, they almost beat the crap out of each other. Do we other. have the stipulation, or are we going to wait for that whole thing? I, I know that it's going to be for a championship, but we don't know. And the, we don't I know believe the championship. Sit. I believe the championships. Uh, according to Jim, now knowing more than I do, talking to him over the phone, is a, it might be for the international title, which is going to be, if from what I've been able to ascertain, is going to be our version of the intercontinental. If I'm correct on that, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. But we will have to wait for. It. We do not know 100 percent what the match type is going to be. We'll let you guys know in like the following weeks of what the hell's going on with that. Yep, but it's definitely happening. James it's Archangel and happening. Johnny Starr. Uh, that match has been confirmed. We, we have no idea what the stipulation is. Uh, Jim's keeping that one under lock and key, but we know it's a title match. But we just don't. Yeah. Know um, what, what the hell these two are going to be trying to do? Because my I God, should be getting. A, I should be getting. A, I should be getting a call from Jim later tonight. So if I have to, if I I have to step out to take the call. I will. Yep. Uh, but um, from that point, we're hopefully, gonna go right. hopefully it happens during a commercial break. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, now we have, of course, the the Divas match. The as I will now quote, uh, the world's greatest suplex. Oh the world. Before, before I have to before say, before we get to that ending, be- before we let's, get. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> before we even get to that, they started. They that match starts be- off at a be- slow pace. Right, before. Before we even get to that, can we take a moment to shout out whoever it is that's been doing the promo packages for this company? Holy mother of God. I felt every bit of emotion and uh, I and, and all not, of them. Whoever that is, he's a flipping sly bastard. I marked out so hard when I heard Metallica come on. <laughs> of course but you did. In, in any case... The promos are very nice, but the match is the important bit that we have to focus on. Oh, true. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, I know. But uh, as we can see in that match, it starts off at a very slow pace. These guys were going... These two they, t- ladies, they, they even took the time to thank the crowd for coming out. Yes. And they, yeah, they, dude, the, I love the taunt. Uh, that's going to be an iconic taunt with uh, Lizzie and Vera just having their arms like out like this. They went at it. That's though. iconic, man. They went at it. Are you ready? And they went at it, and and it's it's one of those matches that they brutalized each it, other. It's a play by play match. You have to physically. Their, te- go their teachers have to be so them. proud of them. <laughs> they were probably worried as well. Well, yeah. Uh, can we talk about obviously spot number one? Spot number one is the whisper in the wind sent on. So so I'm gonna put this in perspective. Vera has Lizzie on top of the turnbuckle, hits the Frankensteiner. Then goes, hits the whisper in the wind, sent on, with the ladder on top of Lizzie, and smashes it on her. Uh, the correct answer is a metal sandwich. That's what that would be, is a metal sandwich, also known as a really fucking bad day. Because oh, because uh, we watch. have never seen something like that in W in, in wrestling history. That has no. never been done. No, we have. Nobody has ever done that in any company in the world. Because it's so friggin' dangerous. It's It really but is. But she, she went that distance, she goes, hey, you know what? I'm gonna hurt myself doing this move, but she's gonna take the worst part of it, Absolutely. and that's my my ass on her head with a ladder right right underneath my ass. And then we go on for, I mean, the innovative they stuff they did. They went absolutely friggin'. We talk bonkers. about we talked about it earlier. It is uh, one of the, the best the, ladder matches. You'll the ever strength see. of Lizzie, and I know you talked about this in quarterfinals episode two, but it really showed here when she tosses Vera out of the ring, smacks her head off of the ladder. She sets up a ladder right there, just laying over the ropes, pulls a Jonathan Brady, pulls a Jonathan Brady, runs up the freaking thing. And the drop kicker and hits a drop her kick. right in the damn chest. And then, her, and then the back just smacks became, off the she ladder. She became the literal meme on that one. John, uh, John Brady and what Shelton. What are you going to do after I kick you in your chest? John Brady and Shelton Benjamin gonna have to give the Duke to Lizzie on that one. Oh yeah, it was yeah. amazing. That was so ridiculous. Uh, stuff went on. Obviously, a spear by Vera onto. I mean, this was one of the most brutal spots I think I've ever seen. I don't Why? know. I don't remember Why? who that did it. That ending is the most brutal spot ever. Known. No, we'll get no, to that. It's we'll one get of the that. most. I'm saying because she hits her. She smashes Vera, uh, Lizzie's head right off the steps. I'm pretty sure it was that in that order. Either she, way, she went nuts, man, and and it shows. It's like she had the better trainer. Heart of the, the Amazon, uh, Heart of the Amazon, 
right into the ladder. Nothing, nothing smashes against, her head off of the freaking support beam. Nothing against her trainers, but at the end of the day, you can tell that she's had way more training to deal with with the, the pain that she was gonna have to go through. Oh uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, uh, n- not taking anything away with Lizzie, but, but Lizzie it's, hit uh, it's all also because... cradle DDT onto the leg of the chair, uh, leg of the chair, and onto the chair itself. So she hit her on a chair twice. With that move, she also uh, hands Vera back a little receipt uh, with putting the chair around uh, Vera's neck and then hits a whisper in the wind sent on, almost crushing v- Vera's larynx. That was the sickest thing I think I've ever seen by a woman athlete ever. So it's not the it's not the whisper in the wind sent on while while you know Lizzie's Dude, underneath the ladder getting crushed to death. I mean. <sighs> For like point. ten pounds of steel. They're both sick as shit. I'll just get to put it that way. It was. It was dope. It was That's a demented. Dope match. What it's, they were doing. A, it was beautiful and demented at the same time. No, no, it's a, it's but then it's a dope match. I don't know. But then yeah. we go to absolutely mental. We go to the outside of the ring. Yep. And. Yep. Lizzie just. I thought Lizzie was actually going to win it at this point because Lizzie's just hitting suplex after suplex after suplex after suplex. She did everything. That one she into could. the post, three into the barricade. Actually, no, four into the barricade. One of the steel steps goes back into the ring, tries to go for the uh, the briefcase. The briefcase. Vera is able to get up, follow her up, and then Lizzie is able to hit the white noise. When she climbs up again. She's gassed, tries to get the briefcase, and slips off the ladder. And this was this may have been the beginning of the end for for Lizzie Gray. There, it was an endurance round. This this whole match it is really a pure was. endurance round. It's These, a painful endurance round, but it's an endurance round. And then, of course, we we'd be stupid not to talk about this um, world's greatest suplex. I got scared. It is the best move ever. <laughs> It is the be- the camera angle, the shot, the look, the distance. She went absolutely mental with that friggin' suplex, man. As did I. That was the greatest suplex ever in wrestling history. Dude, I couldn't Confirm. believe it. I screamed when it happened. Of course, you can't now, hear now, it. Now I got the chance to relook. At the- <laughs> I, I got the chance to look at the match again, and I could see how our girl Vera was able to get back up. And get right back into that ring and grab that goddamn case in the time that yeah. she had. And it's because if you look at her descent down, she goes back first through two of the tables, stopping her, like her, her forward, her uh, actual uh, velocity on the way down. But if you watch where Lizzie's head is, she's going through those two tables, and then her body and her head are getting slammed into the last table at the bottom. It was insane. She, it, she got the, it by she got far the worst is bit of that. It's by far is the best suplex ever done. Yeah, it really is, and and it gave Vera the I opportunity. Don't even want, I don't want to even see the Pythagorean theorem on how the frig like the distance that she was she had to go for to do that and the angle and everything else. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I don't want to see it. It's 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 a it's a chemistry it's a chemistry lesson. In it's and a of four, itself. it's a forty five angle from hell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it gave Vera just enough time to scale Mount Olympus. And claim her right to face Colleen Horizon she was at Immortal. Done, dude. I can't believe Lizzie was able to get up afterwards. That is a uh, pure. That move is a pure blackout. She, she dude. She, uh, she was in. She was in the uh, trainer's room overnight uh, because of that suplex. Like that was not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. The, do not try this at home. In no, case we duh. didn't make that obvious before. But but if I if I had to say it. The people around us were screaming, and not just joy, dude. but in fear. Because Holy my God, shit, no, chance, ever dude. seen that in ever? Dude, I was screaming in fear. I, dude, uh, seriously, I was scared to death because I thought. Uh, well, first off, you got hit in the head again, and second, it was yeah, like it was totally we had two worth human it. beings coming towards us. It was totally worth it from the sky. Yes, that that's was... why I've been wearing the baseball caps more. Yeah, no kidding. They must be reinforced pretty good. Yeah. You have a, you have a steel plate in there. No, no not at all. Water. A lot of padding, a lot of cushion. That's why I'm bald. Just, just the foot good glided one. right off my head. Anyway, that being said, uh, yeah, Vera, Vera moves on. Uh, so the 
that leaves the Athena tournament all set. Uh, the finals of the, of the Athena championship tournament are Vera Garden and Colleen Horizon. And if it's anything like those two matches were that night, oh boy. Yeah. We are, oh boy. We're in for a ride, gentlemen. Tis yeah. gonna be tis gonna be very brutal. And from that point on, uh, we are going to be going to the very final match. Uh, Holy Say again? I think I'm all out. Alright, come back. Holy hell. Yeah, exactly. It's it this is it insane. is a match of a time period. It really yep. is. Jim's it's, Archangel. It um, started. It started the company, and it's pretty much the end of the Gold Rush tournament. Except for we got one more match in the Gold Rush tournament that takes place in Immortal. Yeah, and we'll get to that when but, we talk about that. But this match. was this this was a symbol of of five years. Remember this, December this is, of twenty thirteen. It started with those two. They were the first two signed. Uh, Which, they were by the first the way, two quick in. Thing. Merry Christmas, everybody! If you're listening to this, yeah, yeah, yeah. happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy and Kwanzaa. I don't know what other holidays there are because I'm, I'm a stupid little like Hanukkah. Kid. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal! And a happy New Year. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that being said, um, yeah, the pro. I think this is one of those things we need to talk about the promo. Oh I, I learned God. stuff it, about it's it's a history lesson. I yeah. I, I cried. And it's not a boring history lesson. Not I, like not like sitting in class and looking at it going, oh, oh. And you would know you taught some of those classes. Yeah. yeah. Sad to say that I know that my history classes are boring. And I can't change that because the public school system is Well, I mean, you, yeah. at le- you and I at least try to make English and history fun. Yeah, but that's yeah. really hard to do because n- nobody likes English and history to the point of... Yeah, I could. If sit you make there, it fun, I it could can sit be there fun. for four hours watching. Having fun isn't hard movie. if you have a library card. Just saying. Having fun isn't hard if you have a anyway. handicap retention. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I cried at that promo. It was Dude, good. It was, I, I will. I will admit it. I cried at that. Promo. I had a it smile because I it was knew what this meant. Coaster. I had a smile on my face because I knew exactly what this was going to mean. This was going to be something of major importance, and it was going to be something of of. of Dire straits. It was going to be something very mm-hmm. important because because as soon as we see those two enter the ring, it, it was instant like the switch happened in like the first five seconds of that match. We're like this is where they're going to go with this. Absolutely. And they knew each other inside and out. They knew exactly what moves they were going to do. At the also, right real quick, not to toot my own horn, but shout out to Michael X and James Archangel that they would they would uh, campaign so hard for me. Uh, to be included in that promo in that one particular shot, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very grateful and humbled that they would think so highly of me. So, yeah, that's it's it, a little it overwhelming. I mean, they, man, they were they were talent scouters before we actually had an official talent scouter. Uh, before Jim Cornette even came down. in, they they were the ones who scouted him in, and then Jim Cornette kind of took over from where James and uh, Mike left off. So yeah, well, I mean, it take was, a look at, take a look at the roster before Jim Cornette ever showed up. And it's just it's just pure talent. It yeah. really is. I mean, it was these pure are guys, talent. These before. are guys that didn't need. Like, we had other eighteen. We had eighteen superstars. I think we're we got about uh, we got around thirty two now, maybe thirty three. We have a lot more. Uh, thirty, and that's not even including the women. I should include the women in that list. Yeah. That's so, we like, got, so we got about forty five, almost fifty, total athletes. It's insane, man. It that's really over is. Just a short period of time. It's only over three years, roughly. Um, the match was insane. I mean, I this this is the one match I can't really as it, call as if as if the promo package wasn't emotional enough. The match itself. It's I mean, these guys, brutal. these guys it's went fucking brutal, dude. These two knew each other so well, and you could tell. He, James reversed the spear in like the first five seconds of that match. Yep. As soon as that did, spear gets did, tossed out, he instantly countered that straight into a DDT. Didn't he do something similar in Test Match One? Yes, he did because. Because if you take a look at their matches from the first match, if, if you want to watch something that's an uh, audio quality basis, meh, but... At, at best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is you can see from the first test match to this test, for, to this exact uh, mega event match, this main event match, is that they grew as characters and grew as individuals. And grew as, uh, grew as pro wrestlers. They, they just grew. I mean, they... 
they're and they're not counter and after counter. And their knowledge of each other grew. But we never blow for blow, punch for punch, kick for kick. They, they went for there, there was how many? I, I don't even know. There were like what five execution bombs tossed out, five damnation bombs tossed out. And that's before we even had the first fall. They, these guys just went nuts. They 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 had to beat each other down to a point where they were exhausted by the end of that match. Beating sweat, they were cold in the first We're not match. even going to go through every single spot. It's a match you have to watch. Uh, I, the only thing we're going to spoil is the ending here. No, no, we. I don't want to even do that. I don't want to even spoil it. Well, I mean, it. it's already after the fact. It is after the fact, but if they're listening to it now, I don't want to even spoil the ending. Something right happens now. from the top rope, Michael X wins. All we're going to say is one of the see. best innovations we've seen so far. Because we yeah. know Michael X is... Uh, we know Michael Lex advances. But so you can tell you can that. tell while he was doing that move, he was having a tough time. Yeah. He's like, I just gotta I just gotta move him this way. I just gotta get him up like here. I gotta do all of that I gotta do. He put his last bit of strength into that move and went straight for the pin right after for the Yeah, James Archangel was knocked out after the knee strike too yeah. before that move. Well, if you can tell his Again, body his All body we're gonna went, say like, on that and they they shaked each other's hands and, and Mark Young ruins everything. Oh my. God. But but we know the stipulation for their match. Mortal, it's hell to Mark, sell it. Mark. Mark Young, say it with me, fellas. One, two, three. Mark Young is fucked. Yeah, he's done. Mikey's gonna kill you. Mikey's gonna kill you. I can't wait for that. Been, dude, he's been judged. He has the been crowd. Ju- the crowd is determined. He has, his head he has must been, go on the plaque. He has been judged by a jury of his peers. He's about to be executed. Yep. It's going to be a brutal fucking match, dude. I can't wait. Because, I'm ready. Because here's the whole thing. Unlike other companies that I will not name on this podcast because I have more uh, discipline uh, to, than doing that, our athletes have full range. They, if they want to fight in the back during the Hell in the Cell match, they can. Mm. They absolutely can. It's just the whole thing is they must have their set beginning. And then as soon as they get in that ring, they can, at, at that point, as soon as the bell rings, Jim says, you guys can go absolutely ape shit. True. You want to do whatever the hell you want to each other, I'm not even going to step in. Everything is legal. Every move is legal. Except for people interfering on the Yep, camp, well, obviously the interference, if, if one Except, of, everything is legal except for the obvious. Except for the obvious, this will ruin the match stipulation to begin with. Yeah. Because it... It's you know, it's time we be grown up, Mark, and yeah, it's time, not it's have time to not everybody. Use the cheap. It's time. It's time to stop doing the cheap bullshit because guess what? In this match, you won't have the ability to do cheap bullshit because, hey, something that everybody should remember is that before this match gets started, yeah, both athletes are going to be checked for extra equipment. They're only going to get what they have in that underneath that ring. That's it. Yep, those two. So have so he minus. can't use the glass trick on this attempt. Michael X is better than Mark Young. He's going to prove it at Immortal. Now, I will give Mark Young credit. Goes into the ring and stares down Michael X. And, He's got is one ball. Very ready to iconic, go. very iconic stare down uh, that I think we'll remember for a long time. And before we even got the chance to cut to commercial. We, 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 we were going to cut. Yeah, we, we were going to cut to the final <laughs> moment of the. The final moment was supposed to be just replaying that thing. The show, and then all they of a had sudden a, they had a highlight. We were ready to go, and then all of a sudden, cut out. And then we this see is we had Sean no idea what the heck happened. Fucking placed right into a, an electric box. Yep, and and shut down the power to almost the entire system. All all we had left were were just the live feeds in the truck. If I were to, if I were to explain the panic that we all heard when the entire building went down, I mean. All the way up to the sign outside TD Garden was shut down. The entire arena was was out of power, except for the Titan Tron. Now remember, that isn't the only electrical box, but that was one of the main boxes. It was for that yeah. set arena placement where we were at. And my God, whatever happened after that point, and every, everything was shutting down. I remember we were we were losing signal, and our commentary, your commentary, got caught out. Our commentary was getting completely destroyed. And you could barely hear, you could barely hear us, and then all of a sudden, this file comes up on the Titantron. Diablo dot exe, and uh, dude, the pa- the panic in front of everybody. I mean, there was like Subway and Dunkin' Donuts employees power out. They were like running down, wondering they what the hell was going out, on, dude. And then 
And then we see two new individuals that we've never seen before. Two people that we've never seen before in WYW history. El Diablo. Uh, it was three, really, in the course of tonight. It was Asim, El Diablo, and then this Xavier Nightingale. Xavier Nightingale. The Black Shadow. Uh, uh, El Diablo came on first, said in Spanish, I, I believe. I will destroy or everyone du- in WIW in cold blood. Which, I don't know about that. Good luck with trying to get Jim Cornette to sign you guys. We'll see what happens. Um, there, at this moment, all we know is that there's an invading force coming into WIW. They, they already they're already here. What, but that we know of. Y- yeah. We don't know From what we were told by that Xavier Nightingale guy who came on next, yeah. Vamp Candy and Ori Dre are already a part of this group, and so, so is, is Nick Switchblade. Switchblade which is so that's three out of the six. And one of them is supposed to be coming in for a one-off match because Sean Maverick demanded it. That, of so, course, being as him. We just don't know what's going to happen at this point. We've, we have never I, seen we have never seen a force like this come once, in and start wrecking shop as fast once, as they did. Dude, once the, the closest thing I can equate it to is Scott Hall and Kevin Nash back in the WCW days. And this far outstrips that. Well, I mean, you got to think about it like this. They took out the biggest guy in the company. It, and then one took night. out an entire building With without power. Else. Dude, the panic on everybody's voices when they were seeing this happen, and then it, it went from panic screams to stunned silence, and then pure relief once the power finally came back on from the backup generator. Which, sadly, we couldn't get back onto the live feed after that because we got completely cut out. At that point, we were... Yeah, we, 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 no were, we were cut from in. the feed on YouTube, and that was it, and we just decided to end it there. Uh, people had to scramble wherever the hell they got the music from as well, like... Yep. It was probably one of the scariest things I've ever been a part of. But yeah, as as I will tell, understand as I will tell everybody, um, be careful in the future. Everybody that's listening to this, yeah, hopefully this, this, this won't happen this, again. And we we are we sincerely apologize, obviously, for the malfunctions that happen in the night because obviously, as a company, it is our responsibility. This is a so. true invading force, my friend. They they are not screwing around anymore. Yeah. Whatever whatever's gonna happen, we don't know anything about most of this app of most of these athletes that are being a part of it. We only know about Ori Dre, Nick Switchblade, and Vamp. We know nothing about Asm. We know nothing about El Diablo. We know nothing about this this black shadow figure. Yeah, this Xavier Nightingale guy. I who the hell, who the hell even is Xavier? Nightingale? I have no idea. Never heard of him. Although speaking of people I've never heard of, you you mentioned uh, Asim resembled somebody that you yeah was Zach named? Anderson he looked a l- very you know, Zach, vaguely like Zach, Zach was Anderson. supposed to be at a house show about four years ago, and we, it was down in uh, New Mexico when we were starting out. No one no one heard from him. All all we got told was he we they found his car. About a couple weeks it was, later. And it was crashed, so it was cr- it, it, he got into some sort of accident. But, Wait a minute, I think I heard about that. Wasn't that car, like, completely totaled? Yeah. It was completely totaled, but they never found him. Ever. They didn't find him. They didn't find any traces of Anderson. Nothing. So, I, I assume it's him. We don't know. But that's all I can say. If that is him, he looks all jacked up, man. Yeah. He looks completely jacked up, but we'll see what happens. Like we're he don't even look. Like, I mean, the only reason I could tell is because of the, it, the specifically it was the haircut, and his body tone. Like his he's body tone, fucking it, huge now. He's dude. huge, but like he he still had he still had the broad I mean, shoulders he, he, that he always had. I mean, was so he that's big, how I was able to tell. I was gonna say, was he big to begin with? No, not really. He was kind of. I would he was say, he was like, lean, a, but he was not he was, as he was jacked an average as he is build. now. He would be like the equivalent of a uh, Matthew Nova build. He That's he was lean. He was lean, but not not jacked like this. Now he's friggin' mean. But we don't know. We, Fight we, machine. We can't. We can't even like prove that that's him. Not without an actual DNA test to see what's going on, because we still have his stuff on. Which record. I doubt and he'll give us. I was about to say, can you even get DNA from a cyborg? I mean, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I assume they still have human blood. They just have to get it pumped in. We don't know. Through a certain way. I think. I think at this point, uh, we should just head to our next our actual commercial break. Yeah. Yep. From that point on, guys, we're gonna we're gonna come right back after this commercial break. This commercial break is uh, obviously you know you're gonna hear your ads, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about Immortal. We're gonna talk about the great 
um, match card that we got coming up in Immortal. It's 12 matches of pure madness, and, and I cannot wait to talk about it. And if I may be allowed to toot my own horn for a moment, there is actually something, I don't know if I've told you guys about this yet, but there's actually something a little special to me that I'd like to talk about when we come back from our first commercial break. Alrighty. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't touch that dial. Home. It's where your story comes to life. Trust Serta Pro Painters to create the perfect setting as each new chapter unfolds. We're easy to work with, and our professional painters deliver the highest level of service. So wherever life leads, your home follows. Serta Pro Painters. We do painting. You do life. Schedule your free estimate at certapro.com. Proudly sponsored by Weymouth Youth Wrestling. This is a public service announcement by Radio Massasoit. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Texting on your phone while you're driving. You don't think there's anything bad that could come about it? Huh, it's just a simple text, right, that you're sending out to a friend? Well, what happens if you hear this? That's you in a car crash. And pretty soon, you're going to be leaving behind your family, friends, and loved ones. Next time when you're on your way to school, wait until you're off the road to text someone. This public service announcement about texting and driving was brought to you by Radio Massasoit, where success starts here. After many years on the scene in the alternative rock industry, the V Union are back with their two-part album series, Decade. Part 1 features their hit single, Defying Gravity. Other tracks on this album include, Heart Attack, I Don't Care, the official Gold Rush Mega Event theme songs, The Unwanted, You Can't Have It All, We All Will. The underrated. Download the full album now on iTunes and on Spotify. And make sure you check out the official edits of any of the themes on the official YouTube channel. The Veer Units, Decade Part 1. Proudly sponsored by Weymouth Youth Wrestling. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the WIW Podcast. Uh, I mentioned something a little special in my heart that uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys got word from anybody else about this, but I just got cleared from Jim Cornette uh, to have a little bit of a mini podcast series of my own uh, between now and Immortal. How dare you, you traitor. Anyway, what Traitors! <laughs> What is it? You are not a shock trooper. Shut up. Traitor! <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's going to be called Off the Books, and uh, I basically get to sit down and talk with our athletes, see what see what, uh, see what makes them tick, and what they're thinking about going into Immortal. Oh, finally. That's good. We probably should have thought of that, huh? Yeah. 
But well, you know what? That's why we got him. We've been kind of busy crunching numbers and making sure that people don't sue us. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> Maggie Daddy Man. Since, <laughs> since, you know, the last time the Maggies decided to rent a hotel room, they decided to, uh, yeah, yeah, turn that into a fucking bouncy house. <laughs> Yeah, and by bouncy house, I mean uh, destroy almost fifteen thousand uh, dollars worth of property inside the place. That yeah, was fun. yeah. But anyway, yeah, can't wait for that. Uh, who who do you got lined up so far? I have uh, like fifteen or sixteen interviews uh, that really? I'm gonna be do- that I'm gonna be doing. You better wow. have black suit Spider Man. I'll be very upset. Just give us that. some. Just give us some that you're gonna be doing. Uh, I can't. I, obviously, I can't give you all of them, but I can give you my first interview, which is going to be. Michael X. Hey. I have not actually like heard of Michael X's story, so if we get to hear yeah, we'll, a story. We'll get to hear some stuff, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll get to hear some, we'll stuff. some stuff. Although, given his reaction to Mark Young at the end of Gold Rush, he's pissed. I have a feeling he's gonna be a little He's pissed. He's pissed. He's, he's pissed, really he's pissed, pissed, pissed. He's pissed. He's pissed. He's really fucking pissed. He's pissed. <laughs> he's very angry, and he Wonderful. might punch him right into the face he with his giant fist. He's, he's gonna break, he's gonna break, he's gonna break his fucking jaw. What's this? He's, he's pissed. pissed. <laughs> he's spitting out teeth and blood and gums everywhere. He's gonna make his ass sit right on a metal chair. You he's guys, gonna beat him down you guys until are he almost dies. He's gonna power bomb him from the top of the skyscraper tonight. You guys are goddamn nerds. He's pissed. <laughs> he's pissed. <laughs> all right, um, gonna, let's. I'll get the card up for Immortal because Jim Cordette gave it all to me and I got it in my phone. Cool, so, oh, so he did call you during the commercial break. break? Yes, uh, awesome. so I know, yes, I did. I do know the stipulation now for James and uh, Johnny, but we'll get to that one. We'll yeah, let's, let's run down the card. Do they have the, uh, do they have the order figured out? Let's yep. start with awesome. number uh, Everything one. in order. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your immortal card. The immortal one card has officially been written down. Oh, do you want me to, do you want me to give you, like, a little bit of, like, uh, ambiance for it? Yes. That way you're reading it off, it's like, it's like, Number one. Please don't do the musical number. Just say if you want to do the whole number one, go for it. But no, no music number. <laughs> number one. Number one. Ah, damn it! Oh, nice. My Good phone. Job. My phone turned you off. Idiot. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's redo that. Ready? Number one. Hat Trick Incorporated, consisting of Owen Finch. Chris Dodd and Jonathan Brady take on the Maggie Daddy Men's Corey Dangerous, Little Andre, and Brett Mention. Mm. This is going to be an interesting oh, match. Uh, one thing we can't pick sides on this one. Really? There's a lot of matches on this card that I don't think we're going to be able to pick sides. Uh, well, I, I think we're. I, I think, think we know. I think we should just let the viewers determine on that one because yeah. if we start putting true, it on true, our true. personal bias, it's going to completely derail most of this. Well, yeah. uh, we'll you know we'll we'll do a little difference uh, here. We'll we'll go over the backstory on how all these matches are happening. So as everybody knows, uh, Chris Dog got screwed out of the tournament by Corey Dangerous, which caused and jeez, oh, we have a dog just running around here. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, as we were saying, Hattrick Incorporated um, w- wanted to have a crack at the Maggie Daddies because Corey Dangerous pretty much got uh, Chris Dot screwed by hitting him with the Dangerous DDT in the matchup with Mark Young, which prompted the whole nobody can interfere on anybody's behalf stipulation in the tournament, the Gold Rush tournament I'm talking because about. Because fuck you, we're getting tired of that nonsense. Yeah, uh, so... And then, and then of course you had Chris Dodd brawling with little Andre at the backstage in Goldbush. Yep, uh, which, you know, because, again, Chris Dodd has a, is a man on a mission. And on top of that, the reason why he also brawled with little Andre is because Corey and uh, Brett were in the trainer's room. So he decided... And hey, already got their just due, so he was like, well, we might as well go for all three. Time to make some blood money. Um, and let's not forget, in quarterfinals episode one, after Owen's match with Ramel Tsunami... Uh, Corey Dangerous and Brett mentioned ambushed him. Yep. Uh, and this prompted uh, not only that too, but this match was uh, going to be happening one way or the other. Jim Jim even said so. It was just a matter of when, uh, which then prompted freaking Corey Dangerous to steal John Brady's finisher, the Red Forty Four, in his match with John Gray in round one. Uh, that was the final match in round one, and that was a little jab at him. Uh, and part of that helped him advance against John Gray. So. 
that's pretty much the entire backstory of how this match is happening. You guys can uh, then decide how this match is going to go down. With that being said, um, number two. Next match is a women's gauntlet match. And this is just happening basically because ten it's women all will ten enter women. the ring. Yeah, and only one. The reason why this is we'll happening become number one is, contender for yeah, the Athena title. Will become number one contender. So whoever wins this match will be the number one contender. As I said, with for this, the Athena championship, whether that's before, Colleen Horizon and Vera McGarden, that remains to be seen. Well, as I said before, with this match, this is so hard to pick because there's ten friggin' women involved. Oh yeah, it. that's the equivalent of choosing. I pick this person at this big Royal Rumble style event. It's like, yeah, that's not gonna fucking happen. Uh, You're lucky if you choose who wins. Uh, Jenna Lee versus Rebecca Rose versus Colleen Horizon versus Alicia Vasile versus Vamp Candy versus Deanna Tommaso uh, versus Joanna. Uh, you're not, you're, no, not Colleen Horizon. Uh, I don't even know why it's in here. Was My great? bad. Yeah, that was a typo, ladies and gentlemen. You fucking idiot! I must have like fucked it up somehow. Yeah, you must have. Hold on, let me see if I let me see if I have eleven people in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, I do have 11 people. <laughs> yeah, you just, you know, you know, just, just misplaced one. Yeah, Colleen's doing double duty tonight, She's doing guys. double duty. She's, yeah, fighting, no. she's fighting for number one contendership for a title she's fighting for. Yeah, exactly. Why that not? That would not be a terrible idea. Yeah, except we're not Vince If Vince. I was in her position, that's what I would have done. But anyway. I will never, I will never stop except fighting for this goddamn belt. Except we're not an idiot general manager like Vince Russo was. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. Uh, she hasn't been relevant since 1993. Exactly. 1993, more like it. Uh, Jenna Lee versus Rebecca Rhodes versus Alicia Vasile versus Vamp Candy versus Deanna Tommaso versus Joanna Ramos versus Brittany Mahomes versus Jen Vasile versus Lizzie Gray, and I feel like there's one more I'm forgetting. Uh, that should be everybody. No, it's not everybody. And versus uh, Breezy Bree. Yep. And there you go. There's your 10 women. Uh, I don't know the order. Nobody knows the order yet. But, uh, yeah, right, I, don't do think I, we're, I don't think gonna, we're going to. I'm going to make a shot in the dark like Ozzy Osbourne. I'm going to just make a shot in the dark. One step away from you. And it's going to be specifically, I'm going to see this happen. It is going to be, what's her name? Is that a Alicia Vasile? You thought, uh, you're talking about yeah. the big broad? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Versus well, I mean, Joanna Ramos. So that's going to happen. That match is going to happen. Mm, if it doesn't happen, I'm going home. I'm go. I I'm gonna take my beer and I'm gonna go the fuck home. Well, I mean, there's also Deanna Tommaso, and as I said, I will take my beer and go the fuck home. Um, what are we gonna just see who decides to start first? Is that what we're doing? Uh, you know what? Battle of the Pink People. The Pinkies. Generally, <laughs> generally, <laughs> and Vamp Candy. Yeah, Battle of there the, you go. Battle of the Pinkies. Yeah, the pinkies, sure. The pinkies. Yeah, Why the not? Brain, 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 brain. Brain, 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 brain. brain, 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 brain. All right, yeah. Narf! <laughs> I did that, Brian. God damn it. Anyway, so yeah, that was. What? That's everybody. Why was that so funny to you? I don't know. Next match. What are we gonna do tonight? You gotta Brian? do the thing. Fucking three, fucking three, three a.m. man. No, I want to go to bed. Do that thing, number three. Number three. There we go. Why do I sound like George Costanza? Taka Michiroku and Victor Sagat take on Jack Robinson and Matt Harrington in a standard tag team match with Chris Foster at ringside. So, Chiefs. Cheats. This one we can predict. It's cheats. We can predict this one. I'm I not going like. to. I'm going to leave that one up to discussion. I'd rather have All right, so we're just it. not going to predict anyone. All right. Well, Fuck we're going to talk this. about the backstory for this. Takuma Chinoku uh, realized decided... that his other two partners kind of fucked him. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go with the black guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm the black guy. Token black kid. Woo! <laughs> okay. And okay. they're like, yeah, Listen, Asian black dude. Woo! That's not how that happened. I, <laughs> that's my let story. Me, Shut up. Let me no. tell the story. Chris, uh, Chris Foster, or let him tell the story. You're fucking with my fan fiction, Shut up. <laughs> Chris Foster and Takamichi Noku faced off in round one of the Gold Rush tournament to uh, decide who was going to move forward. Takamichi won, and uh, Matt Harrington took offense to this, came in and started um, taunting Taka. While Taka's distracted, in comes Jack Robinson to start the assault. Take it from here, John. Yeah. And now so you, the, yeah, they assaulted... Go. 
Taka Michinoku, uh, which then led to Taka almost not being able to compete in the second round, which we, we he, would have had to got, put in an alternate. He he fucking he he showed that with heart and determination you could conquer anything, even pain. Yep, uh, he was able to uh, overcome J Bones uh, after after taunting him. How ironic was that? Uh, before getting Hit eliminated. To me. Before getting to me. before getting eliminated. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Before getting eliminated by, by Sean, Maverick. Sean Maverick. So fast forward to Gold you know, Rush, after the mega Sean event. caved his fucking head in like he was a goddamn sledgehammer. As we discussed, uh, <laughs> Jack Robinson won the elimination six man tag for the London Devastation. Uh, beating he also the Kai Tai Dojo and John Gray, who he had also beaten in episode two. Taka Michinoku was in that match, and Victor Sagat would make his return and beat the ever loving piss. Out of Jack Robinson, hence which, why this tag team match. By the way, I'm the only one that's getting a hard time reading him. Who? Victor? Yeah, a little bit. Ah, yeah, all the time. Well, I mean, he's he's a loner. He's never really uh, exactly a. Uh, I'm a Wolverine. He's not the sociable type. Yeah, he's not. N- not at all. He's never been really the sociable type. Although I will, I will admit to this: he has agreed to uh, join me for off the books. But I'm not 100 percent on that. How that's gonna go? Well, yeah, we'll see we'll what see. happens. Well, I mean, you'll see what happens, and then we'll pretend that we saw. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, from that point, uh, you got to see it. Nathan. You got to do the ting. I put nine four. That's not how you do the ting. Four. That's not how you do just the roll with, Just that's roll with it. Just Fine. Do it. I'll throw coins. Next at match you. is Ramel. It is official. Ramel Tsunami will be taking on Zach. Kurosaki. This is going to be good. I cannot wait for this. I really don't know what the... I like high-flying matches. Oh, I like high-flying matches, too, but I don't really know the story reason behind it at all, because it's just like, hey, you know what? Well, I mean, so from Take what... I, so Take from my what money. I, I hear, from what I understand, there were three people that were planning on doing open challenges. Obviously, we knew Matthew Nova was going to do one. But two others were going to be Ramel Tsunami and Zach Kurosaki, and they were wondering why they weren't booked for Immortals. So... Uh, Jim Cornette and Mark kind of came in together in their office. And, and then, ta-da. Ta-da. They were like, well, instead of you two uh, doing call Instead of you two bumping butts. You two just fight, fight each other, and that's how we got this instead match. Instead of you two bumping butts, And bump to, go, nuts. to go about a little history even further back, in Japan, these two had a outstanding rivalry uh, for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. For six, what is it, six or seven months? Six or seven months, so... That feud is coming here to WIW, and I think uh, I think, I think Ramel walked out of there with the title at the yeah, end. Yeah, he did. He did. But, uh, well, but it was still, it was still but a hell Zach, of a feud. Zach definitely had his fair share of wins. Absolutely. So it was a great match, uh, and I can't wait to see this match here tonight, or not tonight. <laughs> see now you got me doing it. Uh, versus. <laughs> Um, it's spreading like butter. <laughs> but yeah, um, at, at Immortal, it will be Zach Kurosaki and Ramel Tsunami, uh, pretty much for bragging rights, if nothing else. Yeah, tonight. Uh, as as mentioned previously in the podcast, the reason why this match is happening is because we need to crown an internet champion. That's all there really is. So to it's six it. men going into a thing, going. I want that. I want that briefcase. Do do the number five thing. Yeah, five. John Gray versus Azra Smith versus Luke Lucky versus Dave Foley versus Ori Dre versus Austin Watonski in a blood money ladder match. You forgot Point. you forgot somebody in that match. What did I forget? The ladder. The ladder counts as its own enemy. Oh no. Because Jesus Christ, they're gonna be using What if that the ladder point. wins? That will be hilarious, actually. That would be, that would the be ladder fun. is dangling from its from another ladder to get a briefcase. What's this in the briefcase? Another tinier ladder. It was a custody ladder. And that tiny oh, yes. and that tinier ladder goes for an even tinier briefcase and wins the internet championship. Which is so tiny you can't even see it. Yeah. But yes, uh the, so, so it's the, like a megabyte of but space. Yes, the blood, small. the blood money ladder match, as coined by Luke Lawrence, <laughs> our, our uh, treasurer, if you will. Yeah. Who has also recently, I heard him talking about. He's thinking about he might want to start getting into this. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I will say though, he needs to buy actual ring gear and stop trying to wear sure, suits eighty percent. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't exactly wrestle in a suit. John okay, Gray. That's so, a lie. Yeah. So we're gonna just kind of instead of going over the. Reason this match is happening. The reason it's happening is because we need an internet champion. We're gonna go over the backstories of all these guys. Well, John, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be quick about it. So Nathan, 
I'm going to lead it to you because you'll know a lot of these guys by heart. If you can't, I will go to him. So John Gray, John one Gray. minute or less. Let's go. John Gray, convicted prisoner, has been in prison for five years, made his way over, and out of nowhere decided, you know what I feel like doing? What I'm going to feel like wrestling oily, sweaty men. And then out of nowhere, it wasn't like prison at all. <laughs> That's less than one minute, right? <laughs> I nailed that one right on the head. I hit that one super hard. Okay. Uh, after ask, John Gray all right, made his way into huh, when John Gray made his way into WIW, he decided to go after the Maggie Denny Minute. After they decided to attack Michael X, and slowly but surely throughout the entire tournament time, he has been showing himself as one of the most important superstars in the entire roster. Created the cell block match, and here he is today in a Blood Money ladder match, the second ever Blood Money ladder match. Yes. Uh, which involves six people. Well, so it was called the Blood Money ladder. Right? Yes. Next is Azra Smith. Go. 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 All right, I guess from I'm New gonna Hampshire. Doing it. All right, so that's all Con- you need to know. He grew up in the woods. From Concord, New Hampshire, uh, well, labels himself as a renegade. Uh, similar story to John Gray, as he's known oh. as the outlaw. However, he was not really convicted of anything. He was just very anti-law and liked to bend the rules a little bit. So he listened to a lot of rage that- against the machine and hates the hates the SJWs. Yes, so he came in. And he, since then, he has had incredible matches with James Archangel and Nick Switchblade and uh, uh, numerous other uh, aforementioned superstars, including the, his tournament match with Matthew Nova. He would get eliminated in the Gold Burst tournament by James Archangel in round two. Uh, and now he wants a shot at Internet Championship Gold. There you go. All right. Luca Lucky. Go. From what I know, Casey, you have an interview with him. I do. You wanted me to just save it for that? Sure. Because you know he's going to talk. You're, you're going to ask him a bunch of questions anyway. You might as well. Yeah, just save here's it for what that. you need to know about Luca Lucky. Listen crazy. to off the books. He's just, here's the correct answer. He is, wait, space, fucking space crazy. And then you underline the whole thing like three times because that's important. <laughs> that's very important. He's hilarious, but he's out of his mind. He talks to things that don't exist. Dave Foley, I got this one. All right. Nephew of Mick Foley, the hardcore legend. Mick the Dick Foley, let's go. No, not Dick Foley. Oh, Fuck damn Dick it. Foley. He's Did a we push bag. Dick Foley? No. Train. Uh, but anyway, as I was saying, uh, yes, so Dave Foley was, uh, Foley. And, and still is, I'm, so, I'm sorry, not was, uh, the nephew, obviously, of Mick Foley, he hardcore was. legend, and is trying to build off the Foley legacy uh, by... Pretty much doing, picking up exactly where his father left off once he finally retired from the ring. So, I can't wait to see what Dave does in this match. Father, uh, to- uncle, uncle, yeah, uh, uncle, father. He feels like his father. Father, father. Uh, came, came to Welcome us. To came to us from Mass Anarchy Wrestling, where yes. he was originally training to be a referee. Yes, he was, and then he was like, you know what? I like this wrestling thing. Oh, also known as Ma. <laughs> it's just Ma. Well, I mean, we're Wii U. Yeah, but I like Wii U. But then there's Ma. Ma. Ma and Wii U. Wii There's your joint show. Wee. Ma and Wii U. Waka. Hey, Mass Anarchy, uh, talk to us. We might want to work with you. No, lies. <laughs> anyway, with that Give being that said, uh, we move on to Ori Dre. All right, we're leaving it to you, Case. Completely uh, fucking annihilated by Sean Maverick in the first round. <laughs> unless you want me to talk about him. Um, I can talk a little bit about him. Um, he came to us uh, from the great state of Minnesota, where he was training at the time. Mm-hmm. Great state. Well, it's, oh, definitely, so, it's, it's definitely produced from some great uh, wrestlers. Uh, yeah, in d- d- Detroit. <laughs> We'll get to that. Battle Creek, Michigan, yeah. and Rob Van Dam. At least we're not Detroit! We're not Detroit! <laughs> Come on now. Anyway. So, uh, but yeah, he uh, he came to us as a um, a bit, uh, just look at the guy. He's big, he's he's jacked. You know he's got some serious power behind him. He's been giving him gay eyes behind the entire... Oh my. Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> oh, come, anyway. on, come on, when you say stuff like that, my I have Can- to make fun of it. My Canadian girlfriend's gonna kill me now. His first match, and really we don't know much about him, and he's apparently a part of this Disciples of Darkness group. Uh, and he had his very first match against Sean Maverick. And got destroyed! Well, not destroyed. He got come told- on now. He did not. Okay, okay. okay. Dude, that was super I'm- even right up until the end. I will now remind you of the wheelbarrow ladder launcher. Yes! And then, I will and now do you remember you. what he did after that? He did a double choke slam. 
suplex onto the ladder. Okay, I will now remind you of the five-minute suplex session that Sean did with his corpse. And I will remind you the fact that he hit the bat omen slam on ladders and steps onto Sean, and also hit switch power slams and jackknives onto various objects. I will, and I will also remind you of the title shot marathon that he hit on Yeah, but I have Sean to remind Maverick. you that he looks like one of the newsies. I will now remind you he of He does the, dress like one of the newsies. God. I will now remind you of the 12 gauge. That is all. Yes, but still, I'm the just titan, saying it was it was very punch. evenly matched. No, it was right not. Up, yes, it was. Right up look until at that the again. Very it was end. totally What's, not evenly matched. Bullshit. No bullshit. <laughs> Dude, it was an even match. Question: right up until Who got past round one again? Who Sean, got all obviously. The way, who got all the way to Gold Rush? Hey, Sean obviously did, but I'm saying it was a hell of a fight that he had to put up against Ori. That's yeah, it was. All it I'm was saying. a hell of a fight for Ori to try to fight back. It was a hell of a fight for or for Sean to have to beat him. Uh, I, as I said, it was an even fight match, up to the end, right up until Sean was like, I'm going to hit you with the steel chair again on the apron, and then I'm going to hit the concerto with the ladder with your head in the chair, and then hit a 12-gauge, and then the Anaconda Vice tapping Ori out. But you're telling up me to that not, point, you're telling me it was an even-ass fight. You're telling me he did not break that man in half. Oh, of course he did. Right at the end. Yeah, of course. He broke him like course. five seconds into the match. <laughs> he was breaking he was breaking him five seconds in the match. No! He hit his back with a bad old yeah, slam. He broke his face! <laughs> Who cares? Who threw more punches to face? Why are we having this argument? <laughs> because you are trying to say, well, you see, he's still this big, lean, mean <laughs> Mike fighting machine. It's like, no, he's yes, a he is. bitch. I gotta give I look, I gotta give him some credit. That you're giving him like no his, credit. Look at his facial hair, dude. He's very close to going lady. Well, I mean Machop that's it. that's that, neither that here nor there. That or that doesn't determine wrestling ability. Yes it does. That, that no, it or, doesn't. That, either going that or He sure got a pretty mouth. Oh come on. I like bim, 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 bim. Oh, no. You remind me of my sister. No, all right, we're 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 we're, we're, mo we're moving on to the next person. <laughs> and following heavy low. And Austin Watonski. So Austin's an interesting guy because he's only had one match as well, and that was with Sakurasaki. But he's a well-renowned wrestler. He's in a Japan. high fly dude. He's the, he's the antithesis of a high fly. He's he's he dude. He is the red hood for a reason. Fuck up saying that the first time I said it. Yeah, right. Uh, but it's all right. Uh, that's pretty much everybody. Just wanted to Yay, kind of put that out, and because we didn't really have a backstory, that's the backstory for all of them. So now you know. Even though probably I know Casey, he's going to try his fucking damnedest to try to get most of them off. Matthew Nova versus Kyle Weaver in an Anarchy as Rules... As many as you can possibly get. Uh, yeah. It's now dubbed an Anarchy Rules match. Because uh, Matt really wanted to go, hey, look at what I can do. Is it is the championship recognized because he said no, he's going no, to it's, be no, it's not, defending but... Anarchy champion? I don't... I, I, the this, guy, listen, listen. He's the equivalent. Of, let's just let the kid in play his with mind. His he's defending a belt. Um, just let the kid to play with his Legos for a little while, okay? Oh, well, I mean. So Kyle Weaver was kind enough to answer Matt's open challenge. And I'm like, Matt okay. Kind of sat there for 45 minutes, going, "Nobody, I want to be on." And the then show. Kyle's like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll help you. You want to ride to the event too?" <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, they're also former tag team champions, so that might be part of the reason why I was like, oh, yeah, why not? It'll well, be plus, I mean, we both know I mean, Johnny... I'm going to beat the crap out Johnny of you, but... If Johnny didn't have a match that night, you know he would have won against Matt. Yeah, probably. We, we both know that one. True, true. Hi, everybody. My name is Gary Hebert with the World Academy of Hockey. We all know Gary. Gary is a great skater and also a great stick handler. Enthusiasm. And to get better, you pull, get better, you learn how to skate faster, faster and better. Developing that east to west lateral explosiveness. So that lateral explosiveness is going to lead to a lot more unpredictability and elusiveness on the ice. You know, now you see me, now you don't. You really have to develop your skating skills and skipping skills. So listen, when you come to my cancer clinics, what we're after is this. We want to build a complete player, quote unquote, from the blades up. When we're on this ice, we're here to number one, work hard, and number two, have fun. If we work hard and have fun, ain't nothing else to matter, okay? Improvement is inevitable for working hard and having fun. Isn't that right, Nick? See? Isn't that right? If you would like to try and go to Gary Hebert's World Academy of Hockey, please go to the website www.garyhebert.com. Right there will be a sign-up page for you to sign up anytime, anywhere. 
make sure to also check out the schedule page and check out the different events that are on there to see what it's really all about. Gary Hebert's World Academy of Hockey, the breakthrough hockey performance center of North America, from the blades up. Proud sponsor of Weymouth Youth Wrestling. If you guys are into the underground hip hop scene, please check out my cousin MC Solar Wind on YouTube.com, SoundCloud.com, and other social media platforms. reason to go on, cause it's lonely on my own. I chose to leave my home, cause I thought that I had grown. My paper stack high, so high, but not cash though. My mind works quicker than most. Guess why I rap for? I write lyrics backwards, didn't catch it, hit the fast forward. You can check out all of his hits from his mixtape classic. To his second mixtape, I Am Solar Wind. Along with all the rest of his music on soundcloud.com slash mc dash solar dash Make sure you give some props to my cousin and tell him that James sent you here. Love you, Ty. Keep doing you, man. Proud sponsor of Weymouth Youth Wrestling. Labeled one of the best rock bands in recent memory and future rock and roll hall of famers, Disturbed are back with their newest album, Immortalized, featuring their hit single, The Vengeful One. Other tracks on this album include Fire It Up. Save our last goodbye. Legion of Monsters. The official WYW Gold Rush quarterfinal theme songs. Never wrong. And the brave and the bold. And the official premiere event, WYW Immortal theme songs. The light. And immortalized. Download the full album now on iTunes and on Spotify. Disturbed. Immortalized. Proudly sponsored by Weymouth Youth Wrestling. Uh, but yeah, from that point on, uh, we go on to the next match, which is the Table from Hell match between Ian Lancaster, Nick Switchblade, and Jay Bonds. All right, so we have a backstory on how this is happening. Uh, yeah, they, they, oh, were, man. They, they were once a faction called the Cycle Asylum. Yes. And uh, then they had a huge blowout. Yes. Uh, and, this was back in 2011. Uh, no, 2010. No, 2011, 2010. I thought it was 2011. No, it was so, Somewhere around there. It was 20. But, it was 2010. They 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 split up in 2011, but their most how this time how this happens. So how this happened was um, Nick Switchblade ended up losing a match uh, initially to uh, reserve his spot in the Gold Rush tournament, uh, and he did end up obviously getting into the Gold Rush tournament later. And so with Ian, That's Ian also Cody got into the championship. In. Yes, yes, he did. However, what ended up happening was after the match, he. Uh, 
next Switchblade tried to uh, assault Azra Smith, who won the ladder match, and then Ian Lancaster came out and pretty much assaulted uh, Nick Switchblade, but then would also assault J Bones. No, uh, Azra Smith for some reason because he's crazy. He's but anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. That he was got very upset. Test match. That was in Test Match 18. Uh, and then. And then, from that point on. Yeah. We went from. Uh, we went to a test, ma- a test match 20. Uh, Ian ends up reserving his spot, and then we get to the match between Matt Harrington and Ian Lancaster. Switchblade ends up costing Ian the match, but obviously you couldn't see him. You just heard his laugh, and the next thing you know... Like, we knew he... we Like, everybody knew he was there, but because there was no physical evidence of him being in the ring, there was nothing that Jim could do. Nope. Yeah. And he this was is before, out. of course, the stipulation of, yeah, you can't interfere with matches anymore. This is getting fucking ridiculous. Um, and then, uh, it, as a little receipt, on episode three of round one, main event was Jay Bones versus Nick Switchblade. And, this, uh, and, and, this, and, this, and this, this was brutal, by the way. And this is actually around the time I joined the company. Uh, yes, this Probably. was. Uh, this was a brutal oh, match. Cow. Uh, got weapons right off the bat. Uh, so, yeah. Then Ian cost him the match, and Jay Bones ends up winning. And then, next thing you know, fast forward a little bit to quarterfinals episode two, and all of a sudden there's a backstage brawl happening between all three members. Uh, uh, and it all started, by the way, and I, I found this kind of funny. It was originally supposed to be a double team by Switchblade and Ian, but then Ian ended up double crossing Jay Bones. And then it became because this big re- remember in the test match series as as well as just since the psycho asylum breakup, he does not like J Bones. He does not like Juggalos. I don't think they like it. I don't think any of them like the other one. No, no, I think they there's don't. a lot of bad blood between all. Of them. So there you go. That's pretty much the reason this is happening. So it's pretty <sighs> much so 2010, and it's now 2018. This is eight years in the making, and it's settled on one of the grandest stages of them all in a table. From hell. Uh, and I have all three of them on off the books. Not at the same time, thank you, Jesus. But I bet you ten bucks uh, and I'll do it at the same time. <laughs> I bet you ten bucks right now that those assholes... It doesn't matter who has an interview, it does not matter. One of them's going to show up and go, My dick's bigger than yours. No, my dick's bigger than yours. No, my dick's bigger than yours. And they're going to have a dick measuring contest that goes a fucking mile wide. They're gonna they're gonna bring out centimeters, inches, fucking they're gonna go to meters. They're gonna go to the level of meters level. Next match is we're almost going to, we're going to centimeters, motherfucker. Next match is almost cousin alliance versus uh Doom Brigade for the tag team championships. The reason why this match is happening. We have pretty much already covered why this match is happening. So yeah. so if you if you're Gold you know, Rush is the reason this is happening. If the, you didn't pay attention, well that's your shitty fault, and you should probably go back and listen to the original part of the podcast. So ACA B MDM. MDM and Doom Brigade beat the Morning Stars, and, and that's why this and match now we're is at happening. This point. And and it's because Jim Cornette realized, oh shit, we don't have a tag team title. And this will be a ladder match, so the winner to climb up the ladder and retrieve one of the championship belts will win the match we'll see what and happens. win the tag team championships. We'll see what happens. So it's going to be a hell of a match to say the least. Now this was dubbed by Jim Cornette. He wants me to use this for the marketing term of it. It's an Iron Man match, but it's known as the man, versus man versus Machine. Although it's really two machines going at it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Shaw Maverick versus Project Asm. The Vengeful One. Yes. The reason, again, that this is happening is because Shaw Maverick got screwed because he got chokeslammed four times by Asm. Yeah. And, in his match against and if, Mark if we have to, if we have to really look at that again, Sean's height is roughly 6'4". Asim is dropping him on his head at roughly six foot three fucking feet. He's six foot three. Yeah, and he's dropping him from this height over his own head and dropping Sean right onto the top of his fucking head. Yep. Four different times. So this will be interesting. This is uh what is it, thirty minutes long? Yeah, something yep. like that. Yep, thirty minutes. Gypsy doubles. That being said, it's a and, thirty minute Iron Man and match. Anything goes. Yep. W- yep. That's very true. Anything goes. The winner who gets 
the most falls wins the match. And if I remember, there was a secondary stipulation, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I do. If Asim loses, he gets arrested and brought up on charges. If mm. Sean loses, then all charges are dropped and there's nothing else that can be done. But yep. we'll see what happens. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I, uh, which kind of shocks me. And and also, if Asim wins, he gets signed to a contract. By the way, we got his final recorded yeah. weight. And him, him and El Diablo, from what I understand... Uh, to let you guys know, on the Markiplier, uh, Jim Cornette um, press conference, press conference are going to be releasing a lot more information. Uh, from what I've been able to kind of dig up, uh, they're going to be letting you know about pounds and all that other stuff that's going to be going on. Yep. So, so we will finally, at that point, get a determined weight for Asm. Yeah, hopefully. 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 Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Because he's got to do the weigh-in. Yep, he does. Uh, James Archangel versus Johnny Starr for the international title. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm actually skipping ahead. No, th- no, this is right. This is right. Uh, J- yeah, James Archangel versus Johnny Starr submissions match. Uh, uh, Did it's... you just say submission match? Yeah, it's a submission match. So you know what that means? We're gonna hear a lot of snap and crackle and pop. No, no, it's gonna be snap, crackle, Angel's what... fuck you, dude. Angel... <laughs> that too. Angel Swains versus Canadian Crossface. This is gonna be a hell of a match. We'll to see what happens. Least. This, this is gonna be one of those matches that we just gotta see what happens. Yeah. There's no, there is no. I mean, way there's some come... bad blood between James Archangel and Johnny Starr right For now. Some really dumb reasons, but that's my own personal perspective. <laughs> For well, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest between all of us here. Johnny's reasoning is kind of meh. Because we both know, all of us here know why James had his intentions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Johnny has the right to his opinion on that factor, but we all kind of agree here tonight. Yeah, it, it's kind it's of It's stupid, yeah. It's kind of I, I think it, it's yeah. a little... I, I, can't help but ag- I can't help but agree, but you know what? It's for the international title. And we're going to get a hell of a match out of it, yeah, so I, I can't really that. complain. I agree with that. I'm very much looking forward to calling this one. Next uh, next matchup is Colleen Horizon versus Vera McGarden. I'll run through this story really quick on why this match is happening. The to- uh, Athena tournament's been going on. Colleen Horizon won her match in uh, in round one of the Athena Championship Tournament, as well as Vera McGarden. Vera McGarden beat Jen Vasile and Alicia Vasile, the Vasile sisters, while Colleen beat uh, Vamp Candy uh, and Bree Zubri. Uh, this leads them into Gold Brush, where, as we said before, Joanna lost to Colleen, and, and, Vera, and Vera beat Lizzie. So, that leaves us with this match. So it's Full Metal Mayhem. It is One more time. But but we have to take into effect both of them have dealt with with, with top na- top notch athletes on both of them have, have dealt with some bullshit. Yeah, I agree. So so we'll see what happens. This is definitely one of those matches that you have to kind of like watch slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if at all possible, because these women are going to be going full hand. Well, well, we'll see what happens. And I mean, I mean knowing and, both of them, they're gonna they're gonna start very slow. They, that's how they they like to start their matches off. That you can tell between both of their styles of matches, they like to you know take their time and warm up into the match. Yes. Yeah. And if my in my head count, if my mental count is correct, head cannon. Yes. That only leaves us with one more match. Michael X versus Mark Young for, for the, the, WI, for the w- heavyweight championship. World heavyweight championship. Title. Two out of three <laughs> falls. Hell in a cell. We've all. This we've match been, has been. Five years in the making, is it two if out not more. Is it, ten, is it two test out of three falls? It is two out of three falls. We announced it on Gold Rush. Alrighty. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head on that one. Two yep. out of three falls stipulation still implies inside the sinister structure. Holy crap. Everything, everything this is a five-year... So, so people know the stipulation. They cannot attack each other till they get into the ring and the bell is rung. At that point, anything that they feel like doing to one another is legal. However, there is no interference. Because if one of the members of the interference's party goes in and somebody gets attacked, well, guess what? They automatically lose, and that title will be put right, on the opponent, other, right yeah. onto the other opponent. So that goes for Michael So, so Mark, well Young has, Mark, Young. Mark Young is now trapped in a structure with physically no escape. He's got, he's got Michael X and, and, and the cage... Walls. Remember the the doors are locked up. They, they, you cannot escape through the front door. They get I mean, locked the fuck. Doesn't nuts. doesn't mean you can't break the walls, but no, but they they're locked in. I mean, we'll be lucky to see if they even get to the walls. We'll see. We're it's gonna, gonna see. It's gonna be a friggin' massacre in that. All place. I know is this match is going to be insane. And no, our cell is not red because we're not like the fucking. We're not trying to be the McDonald's Playhouse. 
Just thought I'd throw that jab in there. Anyway. Garbage. Yes. Anyway. And, and we're also not so crass as to paint it gold. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. Garbage. you. With that being said, uh, there's really oh, there's not uh, enough uh, stuff for uh, this uh, match. You are forgetting one thing. What? There is supposed to be a promo revealed at Exact Night for a brand new superstar. Oh, yeah. A brand new wrestler is supposed to come. Yes, the Lionheart. The Lionheart's going to make his debut after uh, Immortal on the very first televised show of WYW TV. And that's going to be interesting, to say the least. Now, um, to let everybody know, and you and I both know, John, uh, that Casey can also promote to a new brand new position as well. Oh, yes. Uh, may I? Yeah, yeah go, go right, right ahead. ahead. Uh, well, they mentioned, uh, the boys were kind enough to mention the that we are going to be running a weekly television show. Well... What else does every wrestling company have besides a television show? They have the house show loop. Mm-hmm. I have been placed in charge of running the house shows. Oh. So that's going to be fun if you need yes. help, of course, obviously. We've, we've, even got a, we've even got a name for it. WYW Beta. There you go. All right. And uh, we are going to be releasing matches every now and again from the house shows on, on Daily Motion. Really? Ooh. That's going to be so nuts. That's going to be interesting. And, and the good part is... Oh, with, uh, speaking of daily like motion, that. actually, I, I do want to announce this point, too, because this was told by, uh, by me to Jim. Uh, the matches that have happened on Gold Rush, so ev- so by the time Immortal is, is done, you can only see the Gold Rush and Immortal matches on YouTube, but you can see every single match on daily motion in probably by this point you'll you'll see them in a month's time uh each match not full episodes but uh of the individual Gold Rush matches, tournament, but individual just... matches will be released on daily motion hello ladies and gentlemen this is jonathan caterer i just wanted to kind of make a little update from that little announcement for daily motion uh halfway through the uh podcast edit i tried to sign into the daily motion account turns out we can no longer sign into that account so we're going to be making a brand new Daily Motion account, which is going to consist of all the tournament matches in single match form and also the future house show matches that will be going down. So I just wanted to kind of give an update on that as far as that goes. So Daily Motion is going to have a lot of content for you guys, uh, and I can't wait for that. Again, I, I see YouTube being primarily for WIW as, as a, this is where you're going to get the whole thing. Where on Daily Motion you're gonna get the bits and pieces that you're gonna to want to watch. Yeah, uh, the bits I agree and pieces with that. like okay, I don't want to have to go through the an entire, entire episode, freaking show, the entire episode to watch one match that I really want to watch again. Yeah, you can go to Daily Motion, which hopefully by that point we can start figuring out the uh, the um, playlist setup. Yeah, I agree with get that. That all done. But the test matches, I believe, are still up on there. I don't yep, know how test match. All test matches. All test matches are on there. Uh, so definitely check them out, and uh, from that point on, that's pretty much it. Uh, we got all the announcements pretty much done. Except for one. What is? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, have a very happy holidays. True. Enjoy enjoy the weather. Hopefully it's not terrible by the time that this uh, podcast goes yes, out. Yes, agreed, agreed. It starts snowing like a mother where you're at, but know that in our hearts of hearts, uh, we are here with you, and you are here with us. Yes. And happy WYW Day on the 20th. Whoa! Just saying. We'll do something special on that day. We should. Well, yeah. One way or another, we'll do something special. We'll, th- we'll think of something. Yeah. But anyway. I got some ideas. Say, say something, Cassius. All right. Sign us out. With all that said and out of the way, thank you very much once again for joining us for the Weymouth Youth Wrestling Podcast. It's the last one before Immortal, and we hope you're as hyped as we are for the... For Mr. Excitement, Jonathan Caterer, and the main man, Nathan Farrar, I'm the Wrestling Encyclopedia, Casey Gallagher, signing off from South Weymouth, Mass. Thanks for tuning in. Don't miss Immortal.